Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to talk about the AC bridge circuit. Just like with resistors and DC current, we can also check very accurately the impedance or the reactance of components using what we call the AC bridge circuit. We have a sinusoidal varying input voltage, and then we have what we call our typical bridge circuit. Notice that the component between these two points right here in the circuit is simply a current meter. The idea is that if the three impedances are known, Z1, Z2, and Z3, and the fourth impedance is the unknown, and we very accurately want to measure what that impedance is, it typically would be the reactance of a capacitor or the reactance of an inductor, we can do that using the bridge circuit. We can then adjust one of these until the current stops flowing between these two points right here. And then we have a relationship between the impedance of the unknown compared to the impedance of the knowns. So typically one of these, like Z3, would be a varying impedance. We can vary the impedance by either varying the frequency or maybe by varying the resistance as part of that impedance Z3. But here we're just trying to find the general concept of what an AC bridge circuit is. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the voltage V1 and the voltage V2 in terms of V sub S. So V1 is equal to V sub S times the ratio of the voltage drop across Z3, that would be the magnitude of Z3, divided by the sum of the impedances along this path, which is Z1 plus Z3. We can do the same for V2. V2 will be equal to the source voltage times the ratio of the voltage drop across here divided by the voltage drop across both. So in this case, that would be the ratio of Z sub X divided by Z sub 2 plus Z sub X. Z sub X, of course, being the unknown. So now we can say that if V1 is equal to V2, then the current across the bridge, then I must be equal to zero. Then there's no current flowing between them. And we can check that with the current meter. So what we're going to do then is adjust Z3 in such a way that the V1 is equal to V2, current goes to zero, which means we can set these two equal to one another. So we can say that V1 will then be equal to V2 under this condition right there, if we adjust Z3 appropriately. And then we can say that the source voltage times Z3 divided by Z1 plus Z3 is equal to the source voltage times Z sub X divided by Z sub 2 plus Z sub X. Well, the first thing we can see here, of course, is that the source voltage cancels out on both sides, so we can get rid of that. And now we're going to cross multiply. So on the left side, we end up with Z3 times Z2 plus Z3 times Zx. On the right side, we end up with Z1 times Zx plus Z3 times Zx. Now, if we check out this equation, notice on both sides of the equation, we have a Z3 times Zx, so that cancels out, which means we now have Z3, Z2 equals Z1, Zx. I'm going to move this to the left side. Z1, Zx is equal to this to the right side, Z3 times Z2, or finally we can write that Zx is equal to Z3 times the ratio of Z2 over Z1. And so presumably, we can then find the value of the unknown Zx if we adjust Z3 in such a way that the current flow goes to zero, and then we multiply whatever that Z3 is times the ratio of Z2 to Z1 to find the unknown Zx. And that's how we use the AC bridge circuit. We'll show you some examples of actually how to use it as well.